Christian Center, you ready to worship the Lord this morning? Amen. Aren't you glad that our hope is built, our confidence, our trust, our lives are built on the Word of God? And because of this, we can be unshakable. Amen. Come on and worship the Lord this morning and be blessed. Amen. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness I dare not trust the sweetest flame but wholly trust in Jesus' name Come on and worship Him today Put your trust in Him today Build your life on Him today Let's sing this together. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest rain, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the Savior's love. Through the storm, He is Lord, Lord alone.
We're so grateful today that you are the Lord of all. We declare today that you are Lord. Jesus, you are the Lord, and we need not fear the storms of life. We need not fear when the enemy comes in like a flood. We know that you will raise up a standard against the enemy. Hallelujah. We build our lives on you today. I was taught to build my life on the rock. My parents taught me, Don and Sherilyn Bland, they taught me build your life on the rock, the cornerstone. Can we do something a little different here, team? <laughs> we're just we're just La Palma family, right? We're just who we are. We're not trying to impress anybody. I just want to do something. This is how we grew up singing it. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. Oh. So true, so true. People are desperate right now. People that you know, people in your neighborhood, maybe even people in your family. Where do we go in time of crisis? We know. We go where we've always gone. We go to the rock. Where do I go? We go to the rock. Hallelujah. A firm foundation. Claudia is coming and she's going to lead us in a time of prayer. I don't know what your needs are. But I know that you can go to the rock today. I know that you can go to the cornerstone today. Can I remind you that Jesus is still the Savior of the world? Can I remind you that he's still the one who can deliver us from all of our bondages? Can I remind you that we find a healer in Jesus Christ? We're going to agree with you in prayer right now. Whatever your needs are, lift them up to the Father and stand firm on the rock. Come on, Claudia, lead Father us in God, prayer today. Father we thank today. you so much, Lord. We thank you, Father God, that we can come to you at any time with confidence, Lord Jesus, and that you are there in our time of need. Father God, the very hair on our head are numbered, Father God, and you know us, Lord Jesus, before our days even came to be, they were already written in your book. Father God, we thank you so much that we can stand on your promises, Father God, no matter what. Your word tells us, Lord, that you're not man that you should lie, nor the son of man that you should not keep your promises, but every one of your promises is yes and amen. Hallelujah. Father God, we thank you right now, Lord. If there's anyone that's battling with fear, we ask that you would rebuke that in the name of Jesus. Your word tells us, God, he's telling you right now, I'm the God that takes you by the right hand and says to you, do not fear, I will help you. Many are the troubles of a righteous man, but the Lord will deliver him out of them all. Father God, we stand on your word, your promises, Lord. And when anything comes to us, we can say, it is written. It is written because your word is a sure foundation. It's the truth of God's word that sets us free. We thank you, Lord. And we plead the blood of Jesus over every single person watching us right now, Father God. We ask, Father God, that you would provide, Father God, what it is that they need, Lord, that you would give them peace if it's peace, healing if it's healing, anything and everything that they need, Father, is found in you. We thank you, Lord. We praise you in the mighty and powerful name of Jesus. Amen and amen.
worship him today. Lift your voice right where you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe. Our church. Our church and our defense, suffered and crucified. Forgiveness is in you. Descended into darkness, you rose in glorious light, forever seated high. I believe in God our Father, I believe in Christ the Son, I believe in the Holy Spirit, our God is so much and get used to hearing that because we're going to keep saying it because we mean it. We really do miss you being in this house with us and, you know, just doing church together. And we cannot wait until we are together. But until then, I have some announcements for you guys. Edge Youth, we are still meeting on Tuesday nights over on the SoCal Students Instagram on their live at 7 p.m. Pastor Elliot and Pastor Gary and everyone who's helping them are doing such a good job and it's so much fun to just be together on that live and see everyone commenting and just having fun and being encouraged with one another. And this Tuesday night is a special one because Pastor Elliot and Tanner are finding out the gender of their baby and they're gonna be doing a reveal on this Tuesday's uh, Instagram live. So you are not gonna wanna miss that. Parents, church family, 
jump on the live, SoCal students live at 7 p.m. because you're not gonna wanna miss, that, miss out on that, okay? Next, Edge Kids. You guys are still gonna be going to the So SoCal Kids YouTube page, and you're gonna still be doing the services with uh, Robin there. It's a great time, and parents, maybe before uh, service on Sundays, before we go live, if you wanna just you know, go to the YouTube page on a phone or an iPad or something and set your kids up, and then you can watch live undisturbed while they're doing theirs, it's perfect. So, SoCal Kids YouTube page. Next, Quarantine with Karen. I love it. It's been so much fun. I've been participating in it. Daisy and I have been. And it's Monday nights at 6 p.m. And let me tell you, all the women, all the women of LPCC are welcome to be a part of this. So young adult women, maybe you want your teenage daughter to be a part of it as well. All women are welcome to participate. It is so much fun. If you want to be a part of it, just email Karen at karen at lpcc.org and she'll put you in the list. We had a little hiccup this Monday, but we got it all figured out and we're ready to go. We've had a lot of a lot of special guests. You know, we had Trinity Compton, which was absolutely incredible. Um, and we had Susie Starr. Susie Starr wasn't enough. She brought in Amos. And if you know Amos, you know how cool that was. Um, and you know, Pastor Steve jumped on, Pastor Elliot, some kids jumped on because you can't, you can't miss Amos, he's amazing. So, and this week we have a special guest, Nanda Houston, our women's, our nat, or not national, our regional uh, women's director. She's gonna be joining us and leading our encouragement on our Zoom meeting this Monday, okay? So 6 p.m., don't miss out, email Karen, okay? Men, you guys are having your Zoom meeting on Thursday night at 7 p.m and you're actually doing it with Gordon Houston. So we're getting the best of the Houstons this week for sure. And I think last week you had like over a hundred people on the Zoom from a lot of places, not just here, you know? So it's so cool to see that you guys are able to connect with men from all over and connect with Pastor Gordon, that's amazing. So if you wanna be a part of that, email Jim at jim at lpcc.org and he'll get you in that group. Next, we have our Spotify playlists. So we've really been encouraging you to, encouraging you to listen to this playlist that um, we created called No Fear. And I know that it may seem a little like redundant at this point, you're like, I've listened to all the songs in there, but let me tell you, worship gets you through things. It really, really does. Along with your devotional time and your prayer time, Worship will create an atmosphere for you to see change happen. So that's why we wanna encourage you to keep listening to this playlist. Um, now we know you've probably listened to all the songs, so we're creating a few different playlists as well. Um, we're gonna create a gospel one. We're gonna create one for your kids, parents. If you're like, my kids need good, you know, hype, fun music to be listening to so I could get them to, you know, do the dishes, make their bed, whatever it is. We're gonna make a playlist for you. And we're also going to be making a playlist of the worship songs that we do on Sunday mornings here. Because I know that's something that I miss and that you probably miss as well is just hearing those songs from week to week. So we're going to create a playlist for you to uh, listen to all those songs. So just be looking on that account for those playlists. And lastly, don't forget to subscribe. I'm not going to redo it. We're going to push through. Don't forget to subscribe. You got your own blooper right here. You don't have to wait till the end. There it was. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's La Palma Christian Center. And we're gonna be creating our own URL. So it will be easier for you to find our YouTube page. But in the meantime, just go ahead and subscribe and that will make it easier to watch uh, Sundays Live every single Sunday. So I miss you guys so much and I can't wait till we are back together again. Bye. Thank you, Butler Ray. I also want to say thank you to the whole team that's working with Butler Ray, this worship team. I need it so, so much, so desperately, and I know you do as well. We've got some people that are working hard so that we can offer worship to you. Um, thanks to the ones who are in the background. Anya's here working hard. Matt Lambert's here working hard. Tanner, um, as well as all the ones you can see. But I just want to give a little shout out to them. Thank you so much so very much. As you can see, there's a lot of things going on. Uh, we're working hard so that we can stay connected. Even though we can't be together in this house, 
we can be connected and we can be together in heart and in spirit. And these Zoom meetings are a great way for us to, to be connected. So we're doing all of the legwork and all of the heavy lifting, if you will. But unless you join, it, it, it's for nothing. And so as much as I love that there's 25 women that are joining, we should have far more than that. And there's room for you. Ladies, Monday night at 6 o'clock, Karen at lpcc.org. If you're intimidated by technology, I, I thought maybe there's some people, some ladies that are a little bit intimidated, call us. You call Tanner at the office, you call Debbie at the office, and they will walk you through this. There's no reason for intimidation uh, with technology to keep us from being connected. You'll love it. You need it. We need it. Uh, so there's the ladies on Mondays, there's quarantine youth, the youth aren't intimidated, I mean the youth, they're just blowing it up. Uh, quarantine youth on Tuesdays, men of action, we're connecting on Thursdays, uh, come on. Uh, uh, Pastor Eric Montai, he's connecting our young adults from time to time, so we're, we're doing our best um, until we can meet in the house again. Because, well, we miss being with you. We really do, as Butler said. We miss you. I kind of feel like Paul. Paul said this to the Philippians. I thank God every time I remember you. Always, in every prayer of mine, for you, making my prayer with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. And I'm sure of this, I want you to hear this today, church. I'm sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. Paul was separated from the people that he loved, much like we are now. And he could only think, oh, I wish so-and-so was here. I wish I could be with so-and-so. I thank God every time I think of you. And we think of you often, Karen and I. I want to say thank you. Thank you for your love to us. I've had texts and emails and phone calls. Pastor, how you doing? Thank you. Thanks for checking in on us. We're doing our best to check in on you. I also want to say thank you for your faithfulness in giving. It's so important right now. In fact, it's critical right now. The Apostle Paul did not uh, skirt around this issue. He hit it head on because he knew the value of giving. And he encouraged faithfulness in giving. Even in the time of persecution and hardship, as Pastor Elliot encouraged us last week, the Macedonians gave and they were blessed because of it. Don't let a global pandemic stop you from giving and stop you from the blessing of the Lord coming back to you. There are a variety of ways that you can give. You can give by mailing in your tithe, mailing in your offering. If you need envelopes, again, call Debbie, call Tanner, and we'll get those to you. You can go online to our website, lpcc.org slash give. You can give electronically, as always, which is a very convenient way for you to give. You can still automate your giving, and we've tried to encourage you this in this for many, many months now. This is our favorite way, we'll tell you. Now we are so glad that we have automated our giving because we don't have to think about this. It's just, it's just done. So I would encourage you, try to uh, see about automating, automating your giving and stay faithful there. There is actually one more way that you can give, and it's not up on the screen. I might have to adjust the screen for next week because there's really now four ways that you could give here. We put in a mail slot, brand new, and it's just below the doorbell, if you will, at the, um, at the courtyard area, just before you enter the building, uh, there's a mail slot. And so you could, if you wanna get out of the house, Make sure you put your mask on, follow all the regulations, but maybe you need to just get out of the house and take a drive. You could drive by and you could drop off your offering that way. Let me pray for you today. Father, we thank you for your faithfulness in our lives and we are so very grateful, God, that we have the ability to remain faithful to you 
And we give to you, Lord, with gladness in our hearts. We give to you out of obedience, Lord. We give to you with an expectation, Lord, of what you will do. We ask, God, that you continue to build your kingdom and bless your people. We ask it in the mighty name of Jesus. And we all say amen to this. Well, this is the third Sunday of the month. And as our custom is here at La Palma Christian Center, I also want to say thank you for your faithful giving to our missionaries. You know, our missionaries have really been hit hard through this, this pandemic and this crisis. Many of, their, many of their scheduled services have been canceled. Um, some of the church's support has declined and some has been withdrawn altogether through this crisis. Thankfully, we here at La Palma Christian Center, we are able to fully support our missionaries, again, because of your faithfulness. And people like Micah and Carissa Adams, they are our missionaries to uh, the Bolivian people. They are in the Amazon. With they're, they're going to some of the unreached people groups of the Amazon region of Bolivia. It's just mind-blowing. They've invited us to come and visit, and who knows, one, one day, one year, we might just pack up a group of us and go and, and visit uh, Micah and Carissa. They're here stateside right now, but they sent a word, and they just want to say thank you. They want to encourage you. Watch this. Hello, La Palma Christian Center. My name is Micah, this is Carissa, and along with our two kids, Elijah, who's 12, and Ray, who's 8, we are the Adams Family. We are so blessed to be partners with you in reaching the indigenous tribal groups in the Amazon jungles in northern Bolivia. Before this, we served in the Amazon jungles of Peru. I'd like to share a quick story with you from there. One of the ministries that we use to reach those who have never heard is water filters. There was a village who did not want anything to do with us until we offered them free water filters. And when they asked why we were helping them, we told them that God loves them, and so we love them. We're Christians. That, they wondered who these Christians were, and later found a pastor that spoke their language and invited him to come. The pastor showed the chief the Jesus film on his cell phone, and with tears in his eyes, the chief said, My village needs to see this film. So I was able to go back out with a projector and a generator to show the film to the entire village. And the next morning, the entire village made the decision to follow the Jesus from this film. There is a hunger in the hearts of the Amazon indigenous to know God. They're just waiting for someone to come tell them. We know many of you have been affected by the coronavirus, and we are praying for you and that God uses this situation to his glory. We would ask that you would keep the people in the Amazon in your prayers as well. Recently, we have had reports that the coronavirus is in amongst the Amazon tribes. They do not have the knowledge or the technology and equipment in order to treat this virus. It could easily wipe out entire tribes without them ever having the opportunity to hear about Christ. Please pray that God protects them during this time, that we will have the opportunity to bring the gospel to them before it is too late, and that he would call more people to reach them, either through going or supporting. We want to say thank you, La Palma Christian Center, for helping us to reach those that have never heard the gospel and have been waiting over 2,000 years to hear it. Blessings to you guys. Thanks again, church, for your faithfulness. Before you know it, we're going to be shaking hands again. We're going to be hugging necks again. But for now, this is life. No one could have predicted this. You know, these are challenging days that we're living in right now. Social distancing. You know, there's phrases we've never said before. Social distancing, sheltering in place, one-way shopping, crazy and everybody wearing masks this crisis has created a high level of anxiety and fear so what do we do to combat the fear what do we need when fear comes first thing that came to my mind we need faith today we need faith church Faith that is greater than fear. I want to say that again. Faith is greater than fear. Faith is stronger than fear. And faith will see us through the, the crisis that we're facing right now. Faith will help us to rise above the fear. So choose faith. I can tell you, don't fear. And you would be like, I don't want to fear. I'm not seeking after fear. But fear comes to us. 
So the question really is, what are we going to do when fear comes? Are we going to allow fear to stay? Or will we combat the fear with faith? Faith is a choice. La Palma Christian Center and the online audience that's watching us out there, can I encourage you strongly today? Choose faith. Choose faith when fear comes because of the news, when fear comes because of the media, when fear comes because of what you see in the, in the grocery lines, in the grocery stores. Choose faith. Let faith rise up in your heart. Let faith rise up in your spirit. Today, we need faith. We need faith for today. I, I've entitled this message, Faith for Today, right now. Faith for today. Well, as I prayed about this message and I thought about speaking to you and preaching to you about this topic, faith and faith for today, the Holy Spirit guided me to Hebrews. Yes, you're already ahead of me. Hebrews chapter 11. Let's go there together. Come on, open up your Bible right there. Open up your Bible. Let's go to the Word of God today. Let's allow the Word of God to speak to us today. Let's allow the Word of God to instill what we need today. Instill faith in our hearts today. Hebrews chapter 11. Verse number 1 starts by saying, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. For by it... The people of old received their commendation. By faith, we understand that the universe was created by the word of God so that what is seen was not made out of things that are visible. By faith, Abel offered to God a more acceptable sacrifice than Cain, through which he was commended as righteous. God commending him by accepting his gifts. And through his faith, I want you to hear this today. I want you to get this today. Through his faith, though he died, he's still speaking to us. Wow, that's powerful. By faith, verse 5 goes on to say, By faith, Enoch was taken up so that he should not see death. And he was not found because God took him. Now before he was taken... He was commended because he pleased God. And without faith, listen to verse number 6, without faith it is impossible to please God. For whoever would draw near to God must first believe that he exists and then believe that he rewards those who seek him. Father, we seek you right now. We seek you today. We seek you, Lord, by opening your word. We read your word. We meditate on your word. We study your word. And we ask now, God, that your word would go forth in power, in clarity, and it would accomplish what you've sent it to accomplish. We ask it in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. As I read this text in preparation for our time together this morning, I noticed three words that were next to the word faith. And I scribbled those down as quickly as I could, and this is really just my sermon for you today. Three different aspects, three different approaches, three different looks at faith for today. We start here. Verse number one, now faith. I hope you're taking notes. Jot it down. Now faith. Now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Verse 1 explains faith, but also I believe it lets us know when we need faith. When do we need faith, church? We need it now. We need faith right now. We need faith for today. You know, I think our today looks very different from any other today that we have ever faced. 
Elliot said last week, Pastor Elliot said last week, you know, normally I would look to my mom and to my dad and, and uh, if, if ever there was apprehension and ever, ever something happening that I didn't know about and I didn't know how to navigate, I looked to them and then they would help me and they would, they would calm my fears, but we're shrugging our shoulders to him. What do we do, dad? What do we do, mom? I'm asking my dad, 82 years old, and he's shrugging his shoulders at me because he's never faced this as well. We're facing something that we have never faced before today. Very different day for us, isn't it? No one could have predicted a total and complete global pandemic caused by a virus that would shut our world down. Forced rest is what we're really experiencing right now. Again, social distancing, quarantined in our homes, everyone wearing masks as they shop for food, and a mass shortage of toilet paper, of all things. By the way, if you need toilet paper, get a hold of me. I'll see what I can do to get you a roll or two. I don't know. We, I've got a little bit of favor with, with one of the local grocery stores here, and, and he lets me in early so I can go shopping. Seriously, if you need anything, let us know. Call Tanner, call Debbie, get a hold of me, and we'll come right alongside of you and help you. But it's just, it's crazy. No one could have predicted what's happening right now. And this crisis has created chaos, uncertainty, confusion, and high levels of fear. Which, by the way, I think is worse than the actual virus, if you ask me. The fear that is attached to it, the fear of the unknown. But today we have a choice to make. Today you have a choice to make. Now is not the time to doubt. Now is the time to be determined. Now is not the time to withdraw from God. Now is the time to draw close to God. Now is not the time to be lukewarm in our belief of God. Now is the time for us to be on fire for our God. Now is the time for us to have faith. We need faith for today, church. We need faith now. We need now faith. Now faith. Now faith says there may be a pandemic sweeping across this nation and around the world, but I believe in a God who is strong and mighty and able to see us through this storm. Now faith says there may be a catastrophic virus infecting countless people day by day, but I believe in a God who can heal every disease and also has the power to stop every sickness. Now, faith says, there may be great fear and uncertainty gripping the multitudes, but I believe in a God that gives peace in the middle of the storm. Now, faith, faith for today. Hallelujah. Faith for today, but also we need faith for tomorrow, don't we? Verse 1 is also about having faith for our future. Faith for our tomorrow. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for. The conviction of things not seen. Now faith, let me read it again. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for. The conviction of things not seen. It's talking about the future. Things not seen. You know, we're putting our faith in a God that we've never seen. We have faith in a place that we're hoping for. We've never been. Faith for tomorrow. Karen's grandpa, Grandpa Couples, Joseph Couples, he was a lot of things. <laughs> Quite a character, actually. One of the most memorable things, the most noteworthy things I, I could speak about when I think of Joe Couples, he was a World War II veteran who lost his leg in the battle, one of the battles of World War II. He was in a tank and the tank came under fire. He was seriously wounded. 
And the Germans actually came into the tank and Grandpa Couples pretended to be dead. And in fact, they left him for dead. And he was drugged from that place from, uh, fr from a comrade that he didn't even know and his life was saved. Another thing that Joseph Couples was, he's gone on to be with the Lord, he was a faithful Methodist. <laughs> he and June, his wife, Grandma Couples, you could count on them being in their Methodist church every Sunday morning. And you could also count on this. They would request the same song, My Hand to God. True story. Every week they would request the same hymn. And they would sing it for them. So among whatever other hymns they sang at this little Methodist church in Pennsylvania, they sang this one. It was by Ira Stanfield, and it was called, I Know Who Holds Tomorrow. And the chorus says many things about tomorrow I don't seem to understand. But I know who holds tomorrow, and I know who holds my hand. Church, we need to put our faith in a God that knows tomorrow because he's holding tomorrow. We don't know when this quarantine will end, but God knows. We don't know when the restaurants and the businesses are going to reopen, but God knows. We don't know when we'll have the privilege of worshiping together in what is right now an empty building. But can I just tell you this? God knows. And we need to put our faith in this great big God. A God that's holding tomorrow. Many things about tomorrow I don't know. I don't seem to understand. But I know who holds tomorrow and I know who holds my hand. I want you to do me a favor right where you are. I want you to close your eyes. Come on, close your eyes. I want you to close your eyes and I want you to see with spirit eyes right now. I want you to see with spirit eyes this great big God that I'm talking to you about, this great big God that I'm preaching to you about. I want you to see. In one hand, he's holding the whole world. Yes, just with one hand because that's how big our God is. He doesn't need two hands to hold our world. In fact, he's holding the whole universe. All that exists is in his hands. Then I want you to see with, with his other hand, there, there is, is your hand. There you are being held by the same God. It's a powerful thought. God is so big that he said, let there be, and there was. But he's so intimate that he calls us by name. And he has the very hair of our heads numbered. I gave him an easy job today, I guess. But he loves us. Now faith. Faith for today. Faith for tomorrow. Let me show you another word that was connected to this word faith. It's in verse number three. It's by faith. By faith. Let me read verse three for you again. By faith, we understand that the universe was created by the very words of God so that what is seen was not made out of things that are visible, not made out of two by fours. God just said, let there be, and there was. You know, Hebrews... 11 is known as the hall of faith, the great hall of faith, the who's who of biblical heroes. They're there. Abel, Enoch, Noah, Abraham, Sarah, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Moses' parents, Moses, the Israelites, Rahab, Gideon, Samson, Jephthah, 
David, Samuel, and all the prophets. Wow. But how did they end up here? How did they get on this list? Why are they included in such an elite group? By faith. They lived by faith. There's a couple of things that I want you to notice. Notice this. They lived with difficult circumstances. The people I just mentioned to you, they didn't have it easy. They're in the hall of faith, the hall of fame, biblical fame, if you will. But they didn't have it easy. They lived with difficult circumstances just like you and I are living in the midst of difficulty right now. Go to verse 33 with me and you'll understand this better. Hebrews 11:33. who through faith they conquered kingdoms, enforced justice, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, hello, quenched the power of fire, escaped the edge of sword, were made strong out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight. Women received back their dead by resurrection. Some were tortured, refusing to accept release so that they might rise again to a better life. Others suffered mocking and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned. They were sawn in two. They were killed with the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and, and goats. They were destitute. They were afflicted. They were mistreated of whom the world was not even worthy. They wandered about in deserts and mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. This group of heroes that we read of in Hebrews chapter 11, the hall of faith, the hall of fame, the who's who of biblical characters. They face difficulty. The truth is, everybody faces difficulty. We're just happening to face some difficulty that we've never faced before. We're, we're navigating in the dark, as it were. But they lived with difficult circumstances and here's how they did it. They lived by faith. They lived by faith. By faith, Abel offered a more excellent sacrifice. By faith, Enoch pleased God and was taken by God. They couldn't even find the dude. <laughs> He's just gone. He walked with God and he was no more <laughs> by faith. By faith, the Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 11, Noah built an ark. By faith, Abraham obeyed God and went out not even knowing where he was going. By faith, Sarah conceived in her old age. By faith, Abraham offered Isaac to be sacrificed. By faith, Isaac. By faith, Jacob. By faith, Joseph. By faith, Moses. By faith, Rahab. By faith, Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, and all the prophets. They lived by faith and if they live by faith church hear me today you and I can live by faith and we must live by faith choose faith choose to live your life today by faith I believe in a God that I've never seen I believe in a place that I've never been living by faith is how we will navigate this crisis and before we know it we will give faith praise and honor and thanks to our God living by faith. One more word that got up close to the word faith and really stood out to me and I want to highlight it as I close this message today. It's verse number six. It says this, without faith. Wow. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. For everyone, whoever would draw near to God, must first believe that He is God and that He exists. And also believe that He is a God that rewards those who seek Him. What a sad combination of words. Without faith. No faith. Without faith, 
Verse 6 tells us it's impossible to please God. Impossible. You can't please God without faith. And this should be our goal. Shouldn't this be our goal? Isn't this your goal? I hope it's your goal right there. I want to please God. I want to honor God. Pleasing God takes faith. Which means you must first believe that there actually is a God. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Without faith, we are left to believe that there is no God. Let me just highlight a little piece of verse 6 for you one more time. Whoever would draw near to God must start here. We must believe that there is a God. We must have faith that He exists. I know that maybe you're like me. I've never seen God. I've never heard God. I've taken surveys when, when uh, the congregation is gathered here. More than once I've asked people, how many have ever seen God, had a vision of God, and people will raise their hand. I've asked how many have ever heard God, and certainly people will raise their hand. I've never seen God. I've never heard his voice. I'm satisfied to not see him now and not hear his voice now because I have his word, first of all. And when I get to heaven, come on, somebody, when we get to heaven, I'll see God plenty and I'll hear his voice every day. So maybe you're like me. I've never seen him. I've, I've never heard him, but yet I believe in him. That's faith. That's faith. We have to believe that he exists. There's so many people that they fight this idea. A God that just spoke and said, let there be, and he created the universe. He created light and all of this, and I just can't believe that. I would rather believe that there was a big bang, and that takes a lot of faith, if you ask me. <laughs> I mean, think about it. To believe that we have evolved from apes and we have evolved from a big bang, we have evolved from goo, that takes a lot of faith, if you ask me. I've rather chosen to believe in a benevolent God, a loving God, who has all the power and, yes, could just speak. And all that is, is created. Dare to believe today that there is a God. Dare to believe that He has all power. Dare to believe that he exists. Put your faith in this God. There is a God. He's the creator of all things. And he is a God that rewards those who seek him. Don't miss that. You see, without faith, we forfeit God's rewards. Let me just reread verse 6 in its entirety for you as I wrap this up. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and... And that he rewards those who seek him. Wow. What are these rewards? Well, the list is too long for me to list in its entirety to you. Let me just highlight a few. A few rewards. His love for one. The love of God is so wide and so deep. It's beyond description, really. But once you know it, you know it. You want it and you want to share it. What a great re reward, the love of God, the compassion of God. I want somebody to hear this today in particular. God has compassion for you. God's compassion is being sent to you. I'm speaking to you. Let his compassion come to you. Let God's reward of compassion come to you today. His protection is another reward. I believe in a God that can protect us from pestilence. And I'm praying that he does so. La Palma Christian Center, Karen and I are praying earnestly that God would protect this body from this virus and from this disease because he's great enough to do it. That's part of the reward. I'm his son. You're his daughter. We are his children. And he's able to protect us. But if by chance sickness comes to any of us, 
we also believe that part of his reward is healing. We serve a God that can heal us. And he can heal every sickness when and if it comes to us. Another great reward that we need right now is his peace. We need the peace of God that surpasses understanding. The peace of God that will come and guard our hearts and guard our minds. Philippians 4, 6 and 7 tells us. When fear rises in our hearts, when fear rises in our minds and in our thoughts, God, would you give us that reward of your peace? But perhaps the greatest reward from God is everlasting life, eternal life. God sent his son, Jesus Christ, into the world in order that the world might be saved through him. John 3, 17, God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. God sent his son into the world in order that the world might be saved through him. In Ephesians 2, 8, for by grace you have been saved. Notice this, through faith. It's what we're talking about today. You've been saved. You can be saved through faith. And that's not of your own doing. It's the gift of God. We cannot earn our salvation and we cannot work our way into heaven. We must have faith. Faith in God. Faith in His Son, Jesus Christ, faith in God's plan, God's way, even though we may not understand and see fully what that way looks like for tomorrow, we trust God. We have faith in God. We have faith for today. If you've never put your faith in, in Jesus Christ, if you've never really completely put your faith in God, I think today would be a great day for you to do that. The Bible tells us that if we call on the name of the Lord, we will be saved. Do it right there in your home, wherever you are, here in California, maybe in Indiana, maybe across the seas. We've got people viewing from all over. It's, it's quite amazing. Do it today. Make a decision. Make a choice. I'm going to put my faith in God. If you do that, I would love for you to email me or call me here at the church. You can check out our website and get some information. There's a phone number, um, lpcc.org, steve at lpcc.org. Get a hold of me and let me know. And if you need some guidance on what to do next, I would love to walk with you through that. But I want to pray for you today. Father, we thank you so much for your word. Your word is a lamp. Your word is light. It guides us. It tells us what we need. And, I, and your word today has been illuminated in our hearts concerning faith for today. I pray for the church, Lord. I pray for the viewing audience today that when fear comes, faith would come stronger. God, when, your, when panic comes, your praise would come stronger. Give us faith today and help us to live by faith day by day by day. We give you thanks and praise. As we pray it in the mighty name of Jesus, come on and say amen. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you all next week.